What's up guys? Today we're going to be ricing DWM. Now you might be thinking that I've already made a video covering this, but I actually made a video about patching DWM. And patching and ricing are not quite the same thing, although they are very similar with DWM or any other suckless utility because even to rice it, we still edit the source code directly and we still have to recompile it when we're done doing that. But the main difference between ricing and patching is that with patching, you're actually adding new functionality to the program. You're building in functions that it didn't have before and allowing it to do new things. Whereas with ricing, we're basically just changing the aesthetics. We're changing how things look. Um, maybe we don't like the colors up here, this cyan and this uh, gray background. Maybe you want to change the font. Maybe you want to change the font size. Maybe you want to change um, these icons up here. Well, they're not icons right now. They're just tag numbers. But maybe you want to change that to be some type of icons. Uh, so that's the main difference between ricing and patching. Now, with DWM and really with any suckless utility, if you plan to use it for a little while and actually mess with it and customize it, make it your own, I highly recommend that you create your own GitHub fork of DWM. And the reason why is like I said, we're going to be editing the source code directly. So with suckless utilities, even if it is available in your repository, like if you're on Arch Linux, I know there's a lot of suckless stuff there. On Gen 2, I think you can download DWM and ST as well, but you don't want to use those binaries. You want to just go ahead and compile it from source. You're going to have to recompile it anyway after you rice it or after you patch it, so might as well just install it from GitHub uh, from the get-go. So go ahead and do that, and then once we have that, we can start taking a look at the source code to see what we're going to change. Now, some things are labeled for us. So uh, like these comments here at the top are already included with the vanilla source code. So this right here, border PX, this is the border pixel size of Windows. And actually, let me change it to what you're actually seeing right now, because right now you're seeing a pixel size of one. So that's the reason why this uh, this little bit of blue that you can see here, I know it's going to be real hard to see for you phone folks, it's probably going to be impossible to see, but the border pixel is only one pixel wide. So if we want that border to be thicker, then you want to change it to something like two. And the whole reason that it do, it's not thicker when I opened it and it was two is because I haven't actually recompiled it since going in and setting some stuff up for this video. Um, then you got the gap uh, gap pixel size. So this is how big you want the gap between your windows to be. Show bar. Now this is a Boolean value. So it's either going to be true or false, zero or one in this case. Uh, one means that you want the bar to be shown and zero means that you don't want the bar to be shown. So this up here that you see at the top, that's the bar where it shows what tags I'm on, current window that's open. Not this stuff over here, that's SL status, that's actually a different suckless utility. Um, then top bar, so another Boolean value, you can choose whether you want the bar to be at the top like I have right now, that's going to be value 1, or you can have it be at the bottom, that'd be value 0. Fonts, um, so this is another thing actually where this part, Font Awesome, isn't in there by default, but these are basically the fonts that you want to work with DWM, the fonts that you want to uh, be able to see when when you uh, start it up. So the reason I put Font Awesome in there is because I plan to change these tags up here instead of it being one, two, three, you know, all the way up to nine have it be different icons for the type of programs I'm going to be running in that specific wor workspace because on DWM you're probably your workflow is probably going to be that way if you're using DWM you're probably not going to have a bunch of programs just on one workspace because you don't really have a minimize or anything like that well I guess you do if you don't use the tiling function but I prefer to use the tiling function to DWM so I actually switch between workspaces 
Um, and then D menu font, so that's the size that you want the font in D menu to be, as well as the font type. So D menu is, of course, uh, this up here. We can go ahead and launch different programs. I'll start at Firefox because I'm about to get into that in a second. Now, down here, these are comments that I added. So you won't have this in your uh, DWM config, but I've got the default variable names, so you can still follow along. And I just put the comments to make it easier to identify what's what. So call gray one. This is the background color. So all this, you know, gray that you see in the background, that is the default color for. Uh, DWM that same thing up here like the background color not the blue part but the dark gray part that's the color you're seeing now in DWM and really programs in general are typically done this way you define color as a hexadecimal value so this 222222 that's actually a hex code for the specific um, color that you want same thing down here like you know, B, 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 you might not be thinking that that's a number, but it is because in hexadecimal, each digit place is going to have 16 values, right? So you think hexi, deci, deci, that's six plus 10, 16, really easy. And there's only 10 numbers, right? You've only got zero through nine. So in order to do hexadecimal, you add A, B, C, D, E, and F. And then that's how you get the 16. So if you see like an F, uh, for example, down here, that pretty much means the same thing as 16. Because otherwise, if we didn't use hexadecimal, these strings would be a whole lot longer and they wouldn't be as neat. So obviously, thinking about numbers in this way is kind of confusing to a human being, right? Like you probably won't be able to look at this and tell that FF7B00 is this specific color of blue because our brains don't think like that, right? That's how the computer thinks. So what I like to do is look up a hex color picker and you could just, Google's got one built in so you can just do this to find it. Um, and basically just use this because this is what makes sense for a human being right is you look at this to find the exact shade and you can change the the color to be any color of the rainbow and then once you find the exact um shade hue whatever you know whatever color that you actually want to use just go ahead and copy this hexadecimal value down here just copy that to your clipboard and let me actually move this over this is going to look horrible on my screen let me see this is probably gonna look bad on y'all's screen too um let me shrink it just a little bit not too small though so that the phone folks can't see all right so yeah basically we'll change this then we'll do that color instead so once I recompile this, you're going to see that's going to change that color up there. Now, one other thing I'm going to change is these tags. So you can have these be numbers, you can have them be letters, but if you want them to be icons like Unicode icons, then you need to actually install a font package that supports those specific Unicode icons. So the one that I'm going to be using is Font Awesome. And if you want to use Font Awesome as well, then you could just go here to the um, Font Awesome cheat sheet to copy some uh, Unicode characters from. But this is not going to work if you don't have that font built in to your system, if you don't have it installed. So go ahead and install that. Um, there's other ones. I think there's one called like Joy Pixel, something like that, um, where they support these different types of icons. So you got to build that into your system first. Um, but yeah, let's change, uh, let's change this. So what I'm going to do, as you can see, Firefox just starts on tag nine for me. Let's move that over so I can actually see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this nine to be a Firefox icon. And let's see, it looks messed up for some reason. Oh, you know what? I know why. It's because I'm in URXVT. 
We'll be able to fix that. Um, let's quit out of it. Let's do ST. URXVT doesn't really have good unit of code support, so that's why it looks screwed up. Um, let's see, do I have... Uh, I don't think I have the maximize or the, uh, the zoom built in to this. Yeah, let me see. I got to figure out how I can zoom this for you guys real quick. All right, so it's Alt Shift KJ on the on the Boomer's terminal. I don't usually use ST, but I just keep Luke's fork of it for pretty much editing Unicode stuff, which is rare, obviously, for me. So let's go back to that directory, and it shouldn't look screwed up now. All right. Yeah, so font awesome, works with ST. Guess it doesn't work with URXVT. So you can see now I've got the Firefox icon. It still looks a little bit screwed up. Um, I think if I do like characters below it, it'll look regular. Well, you'll see. It'll look how it's supposed to look once I go ahead and um, compile this. And let's change some other stuff. Uh, why don't we do... Like, let's look, is there a terminal? Yeah, there's a terminal. So we'll copy this icon, and I think I'll make this be the first one. Um, doo -doo -doo. And it's so weird seeing it, it's smushed up like this, but hey, whatever works for you guys, see it better. That's more important. Oh wait, I am not doing this right. All right, there we go. So we got a terminal in there. And uh, let's see, maybe I'll do like a, is there something for a document? Or yeah, sure, we could do an envelope. So maybe you'll have your email on uh, this one. All right, so you get the gist of it. And then we can go ahead and make clean install. And then we'll restart DWM. So let's see if I actually did it right with the font thing. Hey, I did, good for me. So now you can see all of those changes were applied. So now we have the thicker border. We've got a different border color. Uh, we also have that, so that same cyan color that you saw, it affects the colors up here as well. And we have the different icons. So now we have Firefox as our number nine icon instead where Firefox actually goes ahead and opens up. So now that everything actually works, I'm going to go back to that directory. Because like I said, you want to go ahead and apply this uh, anytime you have it working or anytime you're at least satisfied with it. Um, I'm pretty happy with this right now. I'm probably going to go ahead and change some other icons, but I don't think I'll record that because you guys get the gist of it. No reason to make this a 30 minute video. Um, but yeah, once you make clean install, we want to go ahead and get add and get commit. Um, I guess we'll say Riced DWM. Oh, I did my commit message wrong. I didn't even see that. I forgot to do my M flag. All right, there we go. And then we could push it. Bam, there we go. So now it's pushed up to the GitHub cloud and any other systems that I want to use this on, I can just pull it down or if you're testing it or whatever, pull it down, uh, clone it, go ahead and install it, compile it, and then you'll be good to go. So hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to share it with people, anybody else you know using DWM who wants to go ahead and rice their setup. 
Be sure to like it and subscribe so that you know when I'm putting out more content like this. Peace out, guys.